Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm gonna show you how to install Base Row on COS OS using Big Bear COS OS, the third party app store. So a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So, let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what I'll be installing today, base row, create it, scale it, and own it. Um, it's an open platform to create scalable databases and applications without code. Um, you can see uh, screenshots right here of it. It's a really nice system, actually. Connect your data and people workflow seamlessly. Organize, display, and manipulate data to exact needs. A gallery. A Kanban board. A calendar. A form. And then you can create a survey. Um, you can also have the grid and then it's open source and it's Airtable alternative. So that's what we will be installing today. So I'm going to be starting on Big Bear Cost OS. Um, this is a third party app store that's maintained by Big Bear Tech World and the Big Bear community. Um, if we scroll down, we'll see the apps right here that are available in it. And YouTube video links are here, so you can click on it and you can see a, how to install this particular app video. Um, I'm going to scroll down. So I have a video on how to install Bitbird Cost OS on Cost OS video, but I'm going to be going over in this video as well uh, to save you time. And um, I, I do have a note down here. So custom app store is only supported on Cost OS version 0 0.4.4 .4 or newer. So if you have a newer version than this, you're all good. So I'm going to scroll up to the App Store URL right here. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to go over to my Cost OS and get this installed. So I'm going to start on my Cost OS, and I'm going to go to App Store, and then More Apps over here. If you do not see More Apps, you need to update your Cost OS. Um, so I'm going to go click it, and then a text input pops out. I'm going to paste in the URL that we copied from Big Bear Cost OS. Then I'm going to press Add. And now we have 180 apps available. So um, you won't see it in the categories yet. So I'm going to refresh, go back in the app store, go to categories, and you can see Big Bear Cost OS now. So, so you can click that, and now you can see only the Big Bear Cost OS available apps with clicking that category right there. So we got the app store set up. So now I'm going to start on Big Bear Cost OS. There will be a link down in the YouTube description. To get to this, um, it will be in the useful link section. So I'm going to go over here to search and I'm gonna type base row. Um, so now you'll see apps, base row, and then Docker Compose right here. I'm gonna click it. And then now we're in Big Bear Cost OS, apps, base row, and then Docker Compose. So the Cost OS app name is called Big Bear uh, Base Row. And then I'm going to set some services. And then the first service underneath the services is called app. The container name is going to be called base row. And this is so Docker doesn't have to generate a random name. And then the image is base row, base row. And it's coming off of Docker Hub by default because there's no year before this. So this is the image. And then this is the image tag. So now we're going to set some environment variables. So the base row public URL is right here. So you'll replace your cost OS IP right here with your actual LEN IP of your cost OS. And then um, uh, the, the ports are 7350. So this is on the host side. And then on the container side is 80. So do not change the containers port. I'll only change the host port if this does collide with another port on your host. And then same goes with this one as well. So uh, 7351 is on the host and 443 is on the container. So now we're going to define the volume. So data, app data, dynamic variable, which is the app ID. And that's gotten from the name up here. And a data. So this is on the host side. And then on the container is base row data. Do not change the container side, just like uh, do not change the ports. 
on the container side. So now the X cost was information to explain the environment variables and the volumes and the ports. And then the X cost has information to explain the, uh, the app on the app store. So the, the architectures that the Docker image supports, and that's this one up here, is AMD64 and ARM64. The main is set to the service name of app. So that's up here. And then um, a description, and then the tagline, the developer, and then the author of the Docker and Pose, the icon being used, the thumbnail, the title, and then the category, so people can find all the Big Bear Cost OS apps by clicking the Big Bear Cost OS category. And then now port map is 7350. So that rhymes with this host port up here of 7350. So that's a little about the Docker and Pose. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to go ahead and install it. So I'm going to start my Cost OS. I'm going to go to App Store, and then I'm going to go down to Search and type Base Row. And then now you can see it right here. You can see it's coming from Big Bear Cost OS because it's category down here. So you can click it. Then you can install right here. So now what this is doing is it's downloading the Docker image from registry, getting extracted, getting it up with Docker and Pose underneath because this does use the Docker engine. So I'm going to continue in background. And this can take a little bit to install. So now we got it up and running and it's installed. So now we're going to set the uh, the cost OS LEN IP in the environment variables. So I'm going to go up to the vertical dots right here and I'm going to click it. Then I'm going to go down to settings and then I'm going to scroll down to base row public URL right here. And then I'm going to um, re replace this with the IP of my cost OS. Then that, that's what it should look like, except this should be different and your IP. So I'm going to go down to save button right here, go and click it. And then it's going to reload the container and get it redeployed with that new environment variable. This can take a little bit to happen. So now it's reloaded and it's good to go. So now I'm going to go over the container options. So if you go up to the uh, top right, this vertical dots right here, click it. You can open in the web UI. You can set some tips. This is like a notepad. You can uh, come down and edit it. And then you can type in it and then press save. It'll reload the container and say base row is okay. You can go back in the tips and you can see it did save. You can go into the settings right here. You can change some of the settings and then press the save button. You can also um, go up here to terminal logs. This is great for debugging. And also you can go in the container from here. And here's uh, the console logs. And um, you can go out of that. And then you can export the Docker and Pose right here. X out of here. So um, you can check for updates from the Bigger Cost OS App Store. And then you can uninstall, restart, and fire off and on. So now I'm going to go sh uh, show you where the files are located. So you go in the Files app, and Cost OS makes this extremely easy to see the files. You, you go in the App Data, and then you go into the Root Data, App Data, and then Big Bear uh, Base Row right here. And then you can go in the data and you can see all the folders in here and your data. So um, you can go up here to the horizontal dots and you can download, copy path, rename, cut, copy, share, and then delete. You can also check mark these and you can uh, come down here to download, copy, cut, delete, and cancel. So that's a little bit about where your files are located. So now I'm going to get the UI set up. Um, I'm going to go over the UI a little bit. So you can go up here and open it from here, or you can also open it from here. So now we're going to put an email address in and a name and also a password. Then confirm password. So email address, name, password, and repeat the current password from here. So um, now I'm going to sign up. 
So now you can see the uh, sidebar over here. So dashboard, trash, admin, no notifications, invite others, members. Uh, that's not available on the free. And you can also see the admins company down here. And then you can go into the table and you can see the projects. Um, you can also create a new table. So start an, a, a, with a new table, import CSV file, paste table data, import an XML file, import a JSON file, or you can also, uh, and you can also name it. So I'm gonna do testing two, and then I'm gonna add table. So now we have a fresh table. So you can edit the uh, the a name up here and the notes, and you can add more and a single line text, a long text, link to table, to a number, and all these different types of options on field types. You can also go up here to the filter filters and sort groups, share view, and then color, and then you can also hide the fields. So you can unhide them and then you can move them around right here. Um, you can hide all or you can show all. Um, you can come up here and you can see it's a grid right now. You can uh, make a, ga a gallery, a Kanban board, which is only available on premium version. And a, ca a calendar is only available on premium version as well. A form, a grid, and a, ga a gallery is open. So... You can go in here and you can create a new form. So I'm going to add form. And then uh, that's what it looks like. So you can you can add fields over here. Um, you can also undo and redo from here as well. Um, you can go come up here to the settings and your, your name, interface language, the password, um, email notifications, a da a database tokens, and then you can also delete your account completely. Um, so you can also go over here and create a database application and from template. You can um, you can create a workspace as well. And then th there we go, we have another workspace. And then you can create a database in it. And then uh, there we go, it's showing up over here. So that's a little bit about Base Row's UI. So I just went over step by step on getting Base Row running on Cos OS using Big Bear Cos OS, the third party app store. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.